In 2028, the multinational corporation Omnicorp has been supplying the armed forces with highly sophisticated drones for years. These drones use scanners to instantly determine whether or not an individual is a threat. TV host Novak wants these robots to take the role of police in American cities as well. But the government opposes having law enforcement that lacks empathy and citizens are terrified of machines. Novak has invited a military commander to his program to demonstrate his point by going over the specifics of each mission. Additionally, he sent a reporter to the Middle East who will broadcast live footage of the robots at work. The reporter calls it a success for safety protocols as she records the robots not harming anyone who isn't a threat around the area. Nevertheless, it is evident that the residents are unhappy that robots have taken over their house. As a group of rebels ambush the robots with heavy weaponry and launch a full-scale assault, soon, there's a bloody war breaking out in the streets. With hovering drones that shoot at the first sign of an enemy and robots on the ground blowing up buildings to bring down the robots, a large number of these rebels also leap onto roofs. Robots discover a scared little boy who is merely attempting to defend himself with a knife in his hand as the entire place starts to blow up. However, the robot instantly murders the youngster since the scanner perceives even a knife as a threat. Despite this, Novak maintains his integrity and assures his audience that the robot's actions were beneficial and only served to further the city's security. Detective Alex visits his supervisor at the police station in the meantime, and he wants an explanation for the incident that his impolite co-workers are blaming him of. Alex gives her the entire tale, explaining that he and his closest friend had met with some crooks the night before to conduct an undercover operation. They immediately nabbed a dealer after tricking him into revealing several illicit weapons. However, the guns they had taken were gone, and no one had signed the papers, so a dirty cop was required to remove them when Alex went to check the evidence locker later. Alex then went undercover once more with his partner, meeting the gang boss at a restaurant. However, their meeting was cut short when the leader received a call alerting him to Alex's identity as a police officer. Without further ado, the leader fled the building and ordered his men to kill the police, setting in a widespread gunfight. The two officers attempted to flee through the back alley when they noticed an opening, but they were soon surrounded and attempted to fire back. Alex walked outdoors without any problems, but sadly, while doing so, his best friend was shot. Alex's supervisor chastises him for leaving without assistance after hearing the tale and promises to take care of the dirty cop hunt. In the meantime, Omnicorp CEO Sellers is in Washington, D.C., trying to persuade the government that robot police are a good idea, but the senators are rejecting him once more. Later, Sellers meets with his staff at Omnicorp's headquarters to brainstorm strategies for gaining public acceptance of robots on the streets. He concludes that they must fuse a real human with a machine because the senators keep bringing up the fact that robots are emotionless. Dr. Norton is assisting his most recent patient in adjusting to his new hands, in the meanwhile at a unique clinic. Norton specializes in emotionally driven robotic prosthetics, thus in order for the patient to play the guitar, he has to learn to focus on his mechanical hands. Sellers breaks up the exercise by having a private conversation with Norton and persuading him to create a human-machine hybrid. Norton meets with Sellers' team to go over their choices, but they need to find a new case, because all of the retired police officers have been traumatized too much by their wounds to return to work. The unpleasant co-workers of Alex turn out to be filthy officers, in a different area of the city, and they inform the gang boss that the police are pursuing him. They will need to take action regarding Alex in order to end this probe. Later, a thief places a bomb beneath Alex's car, as he visits his closest buddy in the hospital. Alex returns home in the evening and spends time with his wife, Clara, and son, David. Alex hears his car's alarm go off just as things are getting crazy, and walks outside to investigate. He is seriously hurt as the car explodes as soon as he gets closer to it. Omnicorp invites Clara to their headquarters as soon as they learn of this and makes an offer to provide Alex a whole new artificial body so he can continue living. Although Clara is apprehensive, they go into graphic detail about all of Alex's wounds, and warn her that Alex would soon pass away if she doesn't make a decision. Clara can only agree to that. After three months, Alex is shown joyfully dancing with his spouse at a house party, but things soon start to go wrong. Alex's new form, which is 90% mechanical, but has a human brain, is revealed by the scientists, and he is gradually reliving his past. Alex is agitated and perplexed when they eventually wake him up, so Norton explains what occurred and helps him take his first few steps. But the body feels too strange, and Alex freaks out and demands that the suit be taken off as soon as he hears the word, amputee. Alex pushes Norton aggressively as he attempts to calm him down. Then, he storms out of the building, 
pushing anybody who tries to stop him. His running speed is incredible and he can easily jump over the building's surrounding wall without exerting much effort. Nevertheless, Norton ultimately chooses to remotely terminate him when he restarts. After a short while, Alex awakens in the lab once more. Norton takes away the majority of the robotic body to demonstrate to Alex that there aren't many biological components left of him, thus there's no turning back. Norton claims it's the only way to rescue him, but Alex urges the doctor to cut the connection because she believes that death is preferable to a machine. Norton reconsiders after learning that Clara requested the surgery, and that his family is waiting for him, therefore he ought to take care of her. Although Alex currently only shows Clara his face, Norton allows Alex to phone her, in order to demonstrate this. Clara thinks he's still quite attractive and is eager to see him again. Alex spends the night at the lab as his body undergoes maintenance after agreeing to participate. The military man in charge of managing Omnicorp's robotic troops in the field, Rick, takes him for some training the following day. Despite his belief that human involvement in the project would be futile due to the superiority of machines, he nevertheless arms Alex with weapons that he can conceal in his unique leg compartments. Rick's predictions come true as everyone rushes around doing the rescues without much difficulty after they put Alex and a robot through a simulation where they must murder criminals and save civilians, because the machines only assess and act. Whereas Alex takes a minute to feel between evaluation and acting, Alex ultimately ends up being slower than the computers. When Alex is by himself later in the evening, he utilizes a computer to monitor the status of the gang boss case. The following day, Sellers is infuriated by the simulation's outcomes, and angrily gives Norton the order to resolve the issue. In addition, he requests a better tactical outfit since he believes Alex needs to look better on film for promotional purposes. Subsequently, in the laboratory, the physician performs brain surgery on Alex to give the impression that he retains free will, but in reality, the machine will be performing. Alex gets a total Mackie over as well, his armor now has a sleek, black appearance. Subsequently, they take Alex to an abandoned building for an additional challenge where he has to defeat Rick and an army of robots by himself. With lightning-fast reflexes and a visor to survey the area, Alex evaluates the situation in a flash and fires without hesitation at any robot. When he is being shot at, he also quickly finds shelter and hides, protecting himself from harm. As the robots start to fall one by one until only Rick remains, Alex fires at his exoskeleton armor to win. The experiment is deemed successful since all of his reaction times are flawless, and he never thinks the machine is making the decisions. Norton brings Alex home later so he can see his family at last. When Clara sees him, she immediately gives him a hug despite his nervousness, and needing a moment to gain strength. Although David is a little nervous at first, he soon gets over it when Alex lets him handle the interesting mechanical components, and tells him he's been recording some games to watch with him. Sadly, Alex has to spend the night at the lab for maintenance, so he is unable to stay. Alex finds his best friend, who has finally healed, when he gets back to the base, and he swears to find those, who have wronged him. A few days later, Norton starts moving all the files pertaining to crimes and offenders since 2011 because Sellers is excited to present Alex to the public in a large-scale event. Additionally, Alex obtains access to all of the city surveillance cameras. The amount of information is too much for the human brain to process, and Alex passes out after having a seizure and seeing the video of his automobile blowing up. Although Norton believes there is no need for a news conference today, the Omicorp team insists that Norton address the problem. Norton is forced to expel everyone but his helper, suppressing Alex's feelings and making him behave like a real, emotionless robot. They can now easily download the entire database to their destination. When they get to the presentation, Alex only sees faces as criminals or citizens, never as loved ones. He focuses on his work, and ignores his wife and friends. As soon as he gets on stage, his scanner starts to recognize every face in the audience until he spots a criminal to steps ahead of the police. People begin to admire Alex as he instantly leaps into the mob, and arrehends the criminal in a matter of seconds without injuring anyone. Because the cops had been standing next to a criminal and had failed to detect him, Novak uses this incident on TV to demonstrate why robots are superior. But, Clara is furious because neither David nor she will be allowed to speak with Alex, in fact, they are denying him any kind of life. Norton reassures her that this is merely a medication side effect, and that he will recover quickly. Alex eventually reports back to work at the station the next day, and promises to apprehend 13 crooks. Disregarding his friend's concerns, he rides a bike and uses his access to the database, and cameras to locate a gang of dealers. While the majority of the group flees, Alex stops a dealer and confronts him until he reveals where his center of operations is. 
Alex finds an illegal kitchen shortly after and rides into the building while still on his bike, firing at any criminals without being phased by the regular gunshots that would normally be aimed at him. Even when they attempt to approach him from behind, Alex Scan picks them out and dispatches them with ease. Omnicorp employees are pleased with the outcome, and Sellers grants Rick complete access to watch Alex in case something goes wrong. As the days go by, Alex emerges from the city as a hero, foiling crimes everywhere, making a great deal out of it. Novak invites Sellers to his show to tell the senator that the American people are gradually coming to different conclusions. The senator is only interrupted when he attempts to object to it. In the meantime, the gang boss meets with the dirty cops to devise a strategy for handling Alex, who has been giving them a lot of trouble. After some time, Clara decides to approach Alex and encourage him to exhibit some emotion, even if it means running across traffic. She asks him to take action for his family because his son needs his father and is experiencing night terrors. Alex appears unmoved at first, but as he pulls away, he starts to approach this. Like the robotic police officer he is, he looks through security footage and finds that David witnessed the automobile explosion, which traumatized him. When Alex finds out about his son, his humanity is severely offended, and his brain gradually reverses Norton's attempt to numb his feelings. He is enraged that his family has to suffer as a result of him, and he wants to make things right. Through Alex Tracker, the lab staff notices this change and considers shutting him off, but Norton wants to see what happens because, in theory, Alex is still solving crimes, it's just his own. Alex returns home, uses the footage from every camera to reconstruct the day of the attack, and sees his son and wife right before he blows up. He searches for a man who collaborated with the gang leader using the few hints he has, taking him out of the car through the window and breaking his hand. As Alex steps on it to inflict more pain, the criminal provides him with the driver's phone number. He locates the precise position of the gang's base by triangulating the signal from his last call. As Alex travels there, the station's police officers find out that he is out there investigating his own crime, and the gang boss quickly finds out that Alex is pursuing him. When Alex arrives at the base, the crooks are prepared to greet him in the dark with large weapons and night vision goggles. A shootout breaks out, when Alex uses his bike to break in and turns on his night vision. Alex has little issue shooting everybody, who gets in his way as he moves through the base, leaving no one alive, regardless of how many criminals there are, or how many times they shoot. He does, however, sustain some damage in the process this time. Alex then puts the power back on and collects samples of all the fingerprints on the firearms, so exposing which police officers are disreputable. In order to question the men and play incriminating video on all the laptops, Alex dashes to the police station. Alex defends himself by shooting the corrupt cop when he tries to attack him. Alex shoots the other man despite his confession that their boss was the one who organized everything while he is running scared. After that, Alex goes over to her employer and attempts to get her to confess, but Rick cuts him off right away. After Rick phones Sellers to let him know that they can exploit this, Novak quickly highlights the incident on his show, demonstrating the superiority of machines over humans due to their inability to be purchased. The following day, the government begins to vote in favor of arming the local police with robots. Nevertheless, Clara cuts off the broadcast when she eventually goes on the news to inform everyone that she hasn't been let to see her husband, and that no one from Omnicorp will return her calls. Sellers is concerned that if Clara gets involved, Alex may regain his humanity, and they would lose control of him, which might get them in trouble with the authorities. In order to make Alex go down as a tragic hero, who people will remember with affection, they plan to kill him rather than retire him because it will appear that their experiments weren't successful. When Norton is ordered to do it by Sellers, he is enraged and Sellers tries to placate him by offering to finance his laboratory for 10 years. In the end, Norton agrees, but only provided Sellers also pays Alex's family. Sellers then orders Rick to prepare his robots. Sellers visits with David and Clara as the senators are approving the bill, leading them to believe Alex has passed away already. When Norton gets at the lab, he finds that troops have already arrived and are demanding to see Alex. He flees as they start shooting at him. Alex is reached first by Norton, who presses a button that causes Sellers to believe Alex is dead, but Alex survives and awakens. It turns out that Norton took away his transmitter, making it impossible for anybody to check Alex's vitals or turn him off ever again. Norton reveals the entire plan to Alex after Alex swiftly kills both troops, and Alex decides he has to kill Sellers despite Norton's attempts to dissuade him. Rick observes him riding through the streets in his car and alerts Sellers, who is going to break the news of Alex passing live. David, Clara, and him are taken to the roof by his guards right away so they may wait for a rescue chopper. In the meantime, 
Norton seeks assistance from the police in locating Alex's closest buddy. Alex finds the Omnicorp headquarters surrounded by multiple guards and Rick's robots at that very moment. Alex quickly takes down a guard to force the others to submit. He then uses his bike to break into the building and engages the other robots in gun combat. Alex finds it difficult to combat the robots because they are better armored and armed than typical criminals. He keeps getting struck by powerful guns, and when he tries to stop a robot by jumping on it, he is only flung aside and becomes entangled in some rubble. With a few rounds, Alex is able to free himself, but because he is moving too slowly due to his injured leg, the robots start shooting at him from behind. Alex's best friend happens to walk in front of the police truck as it smashes into the building at that same moment stopping the robot shooting because police officers are protected by the system. Alex now has the opportunity to flee via a back hallway further within the structure. When Alex discovers Rick, he tries to shoot him, but Rick is identified as non-threatening by the system, thus Alex is unable to hurt him. Rick enjoys giving Alex warning bullets, and just before he's about to shoot him permanently, Alex's closest friend appears and takes Rick out first. Rick shoots him back before he dies, so Alex runs to see how his friend is doing. Fortunately, the wound is not deadly, so all they have to do is wait for the ambulance. Alex then heads to the roof, and the helicopter spots him there, and takes off, leaving the group behind. Since Alex is also programmed to be non-threatening, Sellers is certain that Alex cannot attack him. However, when he witnesses Alex defying his programming, Sellers makes a last-ditch threat to kill Clara and David. This is made worse by the fact that Alex's passion for his family gives him the strength to completely disregard his training, and fires in spite of it killing Sellers in the process as the man returns fire. Alex tells his family that he's okay as they run to check on him, after he falls to the ground. After a while, Norton returns the prototype body to Alex and tells him he may now spend time with his family. TV reporters indicate that the government is now more certain that robots shouldn't be permitted on the streets, and that the law has been revoked, particularly in light of Norton's willingness to testify and acknowledge that what he did was wrong. Remembering that the United States of America, is still the best country in the world, Novak becomes enraged and yells in front of the camera. 